Why Alberta is the world's only rat-free place with humans. G'day guys, how's it going? My name is Ozzy Tash. This video was suggested to me by one of my members on Discord. Cheers, Nightwolf. Before we get into this video, please make sure you also jump on, hit that subscribe button. That would really help me out. Okay, why Alberta is the world's only rat-free place in the world with humans. Let's go. This is a map of all the people in the world who don't live in Alberta, Canada. Interestingly, you can see the only place in the world that doesn't have people who don't live in Alberta, Canada is Alberta, Canada. More interestingly though, this is nearly identical to the map of all the places in the world that are swarming with rats. Also pretty much everywhere except for Alberta, Canada. These rats spread disease, they destroy property, and worst of all, they take control of impressionable young French chefs and force them to cook a dish that's basically <laughs> just soggy vegetables. They're one of mankind's most persistent and damaging plagues. So how did Alberta manage to avoid them? Well, in order to explain why there aren't rats in Alberta, you need to understand why there are rats, well, everywhere else. You see, much like Asian carp, Burmese pythons, and James Corden, <laughs> rats aren't native to North America, but their presence in our ecosystem has proved equally destructive. The common rat actually originated somewhere around Mongolia and began to quickly spread to other parts of the world after the Middle Ages. The shift from wooden structures to brick buildings, and our propensity to fill those brick buildings with cheese, made it easy for rats to take shelter in climates outside their natural habitat, so long as there were human structures there to shelter them. Once a few rats got settled in one of these new climates, they became nearly impossible to remove. A single pair of rats can multiply to about 15,000 in about a year. When the Industrial Revolution rolled around, we started building a lot more brick buildings and filling them with a lot more cheese, and the rats were able to spread to every single corner of the Earth, except for the bonus continent, Antarctica, a few Arctic islands, and Alberta. Okay, Alberta, I'm packing up my luggage and I'm moving. I'm really, really excited to find out how the entire providence of Alberta got rid of rats and why the rest of the world haven't followed. Let's go. Originally, Alberta's rat-free status was thanks to a little variable I call the no-one-wants-to-live-there factor. Since modern rats are almost completely dependent on humans to support them, this factor did all the heavy lifting until the 1910s, when starting a barley farm in the middle of nowhere became all the rage. Alberta's other natural defense is its unique geography. On three sides of its border, it's surrounded by a hefty buffer of hostile landscapes. To the west, you've got the Rocky Mountains, where rats can't survive the harsh high-altitude conditions or lease a decent four-wheeler. To the south, you've got the high plains of Montana, which are too sparsely populated and generally depressing for rats to make it very far. To the north, you've got… cold. That leaves the southern section of its eastern border, adjacent to Saskatchewan, where rats could possibly invade. And though it only took my writer like 10 minutes of reading Alberta's government website to figure that out, it took the rats until the summer of 1950 to finally find Alberta's weak spot. When the first few rats were spotted crossing Alberta's border, the government acted quickly. After all, they were already calling themselves, quote, the only rat-free area in North America, and they weren't ready to invest the money in a more enticing tourism slogan. Instead, they established a rat control zone along their eastern border. Originally, the rat control zone was really more of a giant poisoned farmland zone, with Alberta's government dumping 140,000 pounds or 65,000 kilograms of arsenic trioxide onto all of the farms along the border with Saskatchewan. This led to the deaths of countless farm animals and pets, so naturally the government discontinued the program for costing too much money. Today's program involves a publicly funded team of rat inspectors and assassins who annually inspect every single farm and building in the control zone, upwards of 4,000 premises depending on the year. Now, if you move to the rat control zone because you thought it sounded like an exotic getaway, you're in for a rough surprise. It's actually a zone where rats are controlled. And by controlled, I mean trapped, gas, baited, or in more extreme cases, dug out with a bulldozer. Now Sam, you might be saying, surely there are other ways for rats to get into Alberta. After all, you make all those videos about transportation and planes and stuff. Well, to that I say, stop confusing me for that logistics nerd. Like, who even watches videos about logistics, really? What a waste of time. But to that I also say, yes, good point. Alberta's rat controlling measures do extend beyond just the rat control zone. 
Firstly, Albertans are banned from owning rats, even domesticated fancy rats, as pets. Only zoos, universities, and certain research facilities are permitted to possess rats. If a rat were to sneak in on a truck or a plane, there's an active hotline, 310 rats, and an email address, <laughs> established last year because email is complicated, where any concerned Albertan can report a rat sighting to the government, who then investigates it thoroughly. Wow, man, this is really, really full on, isn't it? It's illegal to breed rats, it's illegal to own a rat. There's a rat hotline number. If you see a rat, you call this number. We don't want no rats coming into Alberta. I guess it's also about where they, where Alberta sits geographically, isn't it? I guess it's situated in a really, really cool place. This is sort of like what Australia have. We have what's called a dingo fence, and that stops the dingoes from getting into the farmlands and messing up all the farms. And it's also similar to what we did with the emus. We took on the emus in an emu war to eliminate the emus. But guess what? We didn't win. <laughs> but yes, we have a dingo fence. It's very, very long. Keeps out all the dingoes because they can get in there and mess around with all the farms, kill native wildlife, and it's just not good. Though Alberta gets hundreds of these reports every year, most of them turn out to be squirrels or muskrats or a mafioso who was caught wearing a wire. Only a tiny fraction turn out to be the real deal, and those cases get heavy news coverage. Or a six minute YouTube video explaining why a rat in Alberta is somehow exceptional. I can't believe that. That is really, really cool. The extent they go to to make sure there's no rats there, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Like I've said, I don't see many rats, and I don't want to see many rats. They are nasty, feral-looking creatures, aren't they? Nightwolf on Discord, what a great suggestion. Guys, join the Discord, throw the suggestions in, keep them coming. That was the video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I really did. Got my skin crawling a bit, but hey, it was great fun. If you liked it, smash the like button, leave a comment, and remember to subscribe. That would really help me out. Cheers from down under. Take care. Bye.